first big interview ahead of this big day. You started this company in 2007. Yep. So did you, you didn't think this was going to happen when no, you started. This, this has surpassed all of our expectations. Did you, I mean, I, I've known you now for a long time. Yeah. And I remember we used to have conversations when there was a moment, I don't yeah. know if you remember, back when it was, it was Uber and Lyft and everyone said, winner takes all, only yeah. one company can win this thing. And you said it's actually more like Verizon and AT&T. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, it's been a wild ride. It's been a wild ride. Um, We've talked a lot about it, and we've shown a lot of the tape from our, our almost carpool karaoke thing. By the way, we almost needed like an XL or something wider for that, for yeah, that, yeah, for that conversation. But <laughs> let's have a conversation now. Almost the kind of questions I think that were probably asked you during the road show mm -hmm. uh, about the business, because there are a lot of people uh, who have not had an opportunity to hear from you about all of this, who are thinking, do I want to get in on this? Do I want to, you know, what's going on with this? So explain this, because I think it's just the biggest question. This is a company that's had enormous growth but also has enormous losses at the same time. Talk to us about sort of how this company gets to profitability. Yeah, we, we're going after a $1.2 trillion market. Consumers spend $1.2 trillion every year in the US alone on consumer transportation. And we're investing aggressively in that market. So we think this is gonna be potentially the largest market that ever shifts from an ownership model to a service model. So not only are we investing in ride sharing, we're investing in bikes and scooters, we're investing in autonomous vehicles. But if you dig into the numbers, every year that economics are getting better, and we're investing unapologetically in the space, and think that the returns are gonna be really incredible. Okay, so, but just to put a fine point on it, if you stopped investing in some of the newer forms of transportation, let's say uh, scooters and bikes or autonomous vehicles, for example, not so clear the company becomes profitable automatically either. No, we're, we're, very, we're very confident in the, the long-term profitability of this model. And again, as Logan said, uh, we're, we're making a decision that uh, is aligned with our shareholders to, to go after the long-term opportunity. But how much is, the, is it the current model? Meaning... The, the current model works very the, well. The, 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 economics, the right. economics are good. And uh, again, we, we would be uh, not doing the right thing if we were focused on the next one or two years, we're focused on the next uh, three, four, five. Okay, but MBOs. just speak to the current model, and then we can get yeah. to the, because I want to talk about the sure. future as well, but yeah. under the current model, yeah. it appears like on every ride, it, it, every ride is not a profitable ride. Am I wrong? Uh, no, yeah. that, that, that's, that's not correct. That's not correct? Yeah, okay. and, we're, and we're contribution margin positive in nearly every single city. And, and so the, you know, the margin on the business, if you, if you sort of track the numbers, we went from a 23% contribution margin in 2016 up to a 46% contribution margin in 2018. And, and think long term, we'll be at a 70% contribution so margin. So if you're my mother and you're watching this right now, and you're thinking, what, you know, do I want to own yeah. Lyft? What is the time horizon with which you would tell her this could be a profitable company? Uh, I wouldn't be allowed to give, to give forward looking guidance. Uh, but, but I would tell your mother that, uh, you know, if you, if you believe in the idea that Americans spending $9,000, American households spending $9,000 every year owning and operating a car and using it 5% of the time, um, if, you don't, <clears throat> if, you, if you think we can make that more efficient and save people thousands and thousands of dollars by doing all your transportation services in one place, uh, then, then this is the right company right. for you. Um, you priced higher than, than expected yesterday. Uh, some people are calling it surge pricing. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. But when you think about the price, what are the comps or the, the metrics with which you would look at the valuation and say, this makes sense, you can compare it to X? Because we were talking earlier today, this company is not going to be worth more than United Continental and the, the airline business. Yeah, I think what uh, investors are looking at is you know, revenue multiples uh, over the next few years. Um, and that's giving them confidence in the, in the long-term value of the company.